What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Capital University. If you're listening, I'm glad you are because you're on Apple Podcasts and you probably subscribed and rated it five stars. If you're watching it on YouTube, go over to Apple Podcasts and rate and subscribe. We're trying to get to number one worldwide. Today we have a really special guest, like, like we always do. I mean, when don't we have a special guest? Pomp, you want to introduce him? Guys, we got Miles Share today. He's the manager and partner with Kygo. They're going to tell us everything all about how he and Kygo built the business, how they have built wealth, and going to give a bunch of great advice to Bryce. We're excited for you guys to listen to this one. Thanks for tuning in today. So, Miles, maybe just start real quick. Tell us kind of your background and how the uh, you and Kygo have built the businesses that you guys have built, so Bryce can get a, a quick understanding of that. Yeah, of course. So. You know, I started out when I was like 16. I went to Ultra Music Festival like any other person who's kind of like from Miami. I went there and I was just immediately hooked by the atmosphere. You know, I saw the stages with Tiesto and all these guys DJing. And I just thought to myself, I'm like, how do I get involved? So, you know, as any other person kind of with you, seeing someone performing on stage, they think, hey, that could be me. So I started DJing. I threw all my high school after parties. I was DJing in clubs when I was like 16, 17, 18. You're at a club right now, the Palm Club. I'm in a club. I'm in a club. I still have the club. This is, you know, to bring back old memories. And, uh, you know, it kind of started from there. And then I realized, you know, the way the music industry was going, like DJs had to actually produce and make songs. It wasn't just like you can just DJ and, you know, play other people's stuff and, and you'd be successful. So, you know, I basically was like, listen, I can't make music. This isn't going to work for me. I ended up, you know, creating a music blog called EDM Sauce that uh, I used to promote other people's music and, and thought that could be an outlet for myself. And then I decided that, you know, I was going to use that to promote other artists and other people had other blogs. So basically I started when I was 20 years old, I started reaching out uh, to people on Facebook that I found from like Australia and Norway. So you know, I reached out to Kygo. I mean, we, the Instagram, there was no Instagram at the time when I reached out to Kygo. I'm 27 now, so seven years ago, no Instagram. And hit him up on Facebook. I go, dude, listen, I love your music. I think you could be big. You know, I think we got something great going. And we literally talked on Skype every day for six, seven months. We were releasing music, you know, all these remixes on SoundCloud. And then, you know, we basically decided to do a show. So we met for the first time in Paris, like seven months later. He does a show, we show up to the place, there's zero people there, I'm freaking out, I'm calling my mom, I'm like, mom, what do I do, what's gonna happen, is my life over? And it's funny, because Kygo's actually happy. He's pretty nervous, he's like, I don't want anybody there, and I'm freaking out. He gets on, he's about to perform, the entire room fills up, and we look at each other, we lock eyes, and we go, okay, man, we got something, there's something here. Two months later, we both left college, we were both in college, and you know, we started releasing original music, not just doing remixes. We were very focused on streaming. We were ahead of the game. We knew that music, people weren't buying music anymore, that everyone was going to use Spotify there. You know, obviously, of course, Apple Music transitioned as well into streaming. And, you know, that was kind of our focus always. And, you know, when you talk about our story and the things of how we built an empire, you know, yes, we started doing shows. We started headlining festivals. But, like, you know what? We also, when we got approached by Uber to do seven or eight shows with them, you know, we didn't, we, we go, Hey, we think this, I mean, it was already a popular company, but you know, this was six years ago. We think this could be an even bigger company. And we ended up working a deal where we didn't want any cash. We took all equity. And that was kind of where our minds started spinning of like, Hey, how can we do something bigger than just cause like, you know, I'm Bryce, I'm sure you get it too. Like, you know, the cash flow is great. People reach out, they want to do deals, but you know, there's a whole future ahead. There's money that can come so much more years ahead and, and, and more opportunity. So that was kind of where we got our first taste of, you know, a company where we didn't just take cash, where we took equity and we believed in something and built with it, which was a great company. Uh, and we kind of just started taking that approach and throwing our own events and, and really just being more lucrative when it came to doing Vegas deals, you know, just even taking less money in the beginning because we wanted to work with the right hotel in Vegas and, and build with them. And we ended up actually becoming the top earner at the win hotel you know, for the price that we're getting paid. And, you know, we've always valued all of our partnerships and, and grown with them. We've never thought that, hey, what's the next six months like? We always thought, what's the next six years like? And, um, you know, as I said, we had one vessel, we did all these amazing things. And, you know, we now, me and Kai will own a management company together where we represent all the songwriters that write all the music together with him. We have a publishing company. We have a record label that we use for upcoming songwriters because, 
I don't know how you know familiar you guys are with Kygo, but most artists that he's actually worked with are, are, are were pretty unknown writers that sent us songs. They emailed me, being like, "Hey, I would do anything," and that's what he loves. So we created a record label so we could also help them get their own music out there. And of course, you know, we've done you know, funny enough, actually, on our label, we actually released Vin Diesel's first ever song last week, which was pretty cool. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and, and I got him in the vocal booth three years ago. So the label's also. You know, yes, for songwriters, but it's also like a, a tool for us to use with our friends and just something to have fun with. As I'm sure, you know, your podcast is something like, similar to that. So that's kind of my labels, like my podcast is, is, a, is a way to get different things out. But yeah, we, we kind of just, you know, formed this company over time. And, you know, the best part is, is I did it with Kaibo. I, I made it with them. I wanted to share it all. Uh, every company, we also, uh, you know, have a fund, a holding company where we invest in you know, amazing companies. We bring, not only do we invest in it, we bring our best friends that we've built amazing relationships with into the company, and we all build it together. So that's. Kind of did you have, did you ever hear my uh, hit song "Still Softish"? I have not heard this. <laughs> 30, 34 million views on wow. YouTube. It's it's a uh, joke. Uh, it, it's a joke ass diss track. I mean, I'm not a musician at all. But but yo. It, crazy though because you know i feel like when it comes down to releasing music now i was just on a call with my label and like yeah i want to sign like unknown songwriters yeah like i'm all for it but i think you need an edge you know i think when you release a song these days you you need an edge and that's what i was telling them. i was like i think that yeah it makes sense you have a song that's that big I, can i release the next one you, you want to wait for <laughs> yeah let's do it but you're like <laughs> It's funny, Michael's listening right now, but you're like the Michael Gruen to Kygo. Uh, Wait, hold on, hold on, on, hold on a second. Did we just broker a record deal live on the podcast? Is that what the title of this podcast is? <laughs> I think so. I'm ready, man. Let's, I'm ready. I got that. We got that recorded, by the way. That's, that, that could be you right there. Uh, the party, party animal ex Kygo doing some crazy music in the future. You guys, are <laughs> I mean, I, I, but, but Miles, I think this is a great example, right? Where Bryce has built this massive audience, right? He has this relationship with millions of people around the world and whether he wants to post TikTok videos, he wants to post longer form YouTube videos. He wants to create an energy drink, or he literally wants to partner up with you guys and go release a brand new song on a music label. Like this is the future of building these companies, right? Is it's the individual having the audience and then being able to kind of move that audience across platforms and across different businesses. Talk a little bit about like, if you're helping Bryce, like how should he think about that? I, you know, I actually, funny enough, people sent me uh, like Insta stories of you saying, I want to invest in other companies. I want to, like, I saw that you were actively looking to invest and I was just like, yo, this kid's a genius. And, and what I mean by that is, is we're like, also I'm young too. We're lucky that, we can now see this. Like, could you imagine artists from like that artist or any influence or any actor? Like, do you think they knew what was out there that they can go get equity and deals that they can go start their own energy drink? Like, like it, kids, kids now don't, don't even know, know. but, no, but no. they still, still don't know. But you know what though? I think that it's turning because clearly me and you are doing it, you know? So there are younger people that are out there that are doing it and that, and hopefully more will, because like I said, cash flow is great. And we're so lucky that we have that. It's only temporary. It's temporary, but we're also able to reinvest it because we don't feel it. It's coming in. Like when Kai goes, you know, been 20 for seven years, I had, you know, like what fortune I've had a lot of money coming in and I chose to put it in amazing companies that we had access to because we get access, right? Everybody's like, Hey, we want these people in these deals because they promote it. They help us. We get access. And yeah, I think what you're doing is unbelievable. And I think the smartest thing is, is like, listen, yeah, own your own shit own your own stuff. Like you're doing like the energy drink we spoke about, you know, I know we're almost, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to get in there, but you know, the guy that you worked with, we, you know, we did an alcoholic beverage with him and it's going through the roof right now. And it's like, yeah, no, I, I it's long drink. Yeah, it's called long so, so back to, back to like, you know, kids around the twenties, not knowing what the fuck to do. Do you think this podcast will help a lot of the people that want to get into it? actually get into it I think this podcast, like influencers oh i think it's gonna help so much because i feel like you know you guys your whole crew is really like people are looking at you whether it's for a gym whether it's for anything i think that they need guidance and when i saw that you were doing this show and i saw just in general you know when you were insta stories with scooter and guy because those are all guys that influenced me as well 
And you know, me and Scooter actually did a deal that was that was great that we just exited out of. And you know, he also inspired me. So when I saw that you were saying, "Hey, hit me up, let's do something," that's actually somebody was like, I think Evan was like, "Hey, Mike, like, connected me and Michael Green is like, you guys have to be close together. You got to be doing stuff." So I think that you're you are so needed for this world. Understand for young kids what to do because I, you know. As I've been doing this for a minute, I've seen so many influencers, man, just take money, not take equity, not own anything. And, and like, honestly, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to get into names, but there's some people that, you know, haven't gone to their full potential or even, even where they should have been, you know, and, and it's sad to see me, man. And by the way, it happens in artists too. I've seen artists be hot for a year or two, musicians, and they don't think further. They don't know what to do. They never, you know, not even invest the money, like putting it with a UBS account, you know, they just never even cared to look at other companies. They never cared, you know, like splice, right? Like every producer. I don't you. think, I don't think they never cared. I think they just never knew. Yeah. You know what though? They never knew, but you know, like, like, like you have this podcast. I hope people tune into your podcast and learn because a lot of people, you know, don't take the time to even want to learn, you know? And, and I hope, and I think that's changing by the way. I think that's kind of what I was saying is I think that it's changed where people want to learn more now. So they don't know, but they want to learn. They're hearing rumbles in the air and they want to know. So Miles, talk a little bit about uh, you, Kygo. You guys see tons of deals. You have access. You can pretty much get into any deal you want. How do you guys evaluate what are legitimate deals that you should be doing and deals maybe that they sound great, but but aren't great investments? How do you guys kind of go through that without having the background as full-time professional investors? So rule number one is, as it is with the song, it's got to be the product. The product isn't good. If you don't love it, if you don't like it, you're out, done. So I always look at the product. And I judge not even just how it looks. Honestly, it could taste, smell, whatever it is. It's always about what you like. So if I like the product, that's where I start. Second off, you know, we do have a strategic, a guy who runs our investment holding company that I send to to look at the companies actually making money because there's crazy companies out there, man, that say they're valued at so much money that doesn't even make any sense. So you got to be careful for that. So, I, you know, you got to have somebody on your team that you can trust to look at that. Um, and I think third is, you know, you got to like the CEO who's ever in charge of the company. You've got to believe in that guy. And, you know, I, you know, I'm investing in this company, Liquid IV that, you know, just exited. That was unbelievable. And when I first got involved in the company, I called the CEO and, and I was like, this guy is unbelievable. Like this guy's going to lead me to the Willy Wonka factory. That's where I want to go. And I think that that's the three things that I look for is, you know, who's the CEO, who's in charge, who's going to take you there. You know, the valuation is important but also making sure that they're actually making money and that they have a foreseeable future. And, and three, that the product is amazing. I mean, that, that's kind of, I mean, I know it sounds straightforward. So that's what we look So for. do you think, so do you think the Hollywood system is built to help celebrities build things? Or do you think agents are just trying to get a little quick cash grab? You know, I don't get any of my deals usually for my agents, but you know, cause we're just so in the mix and involved, but I think, look, whatever it takes to get a good deal. I've had agents bring people deals. I think whatever, whoever brings you something great, but yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be careful out there. I mean, I think that, Oh, I started this when I was 14 years old. I'm 21. Now I got taken advantage of, uh, by two separate managers, uh, by stealing my money. That's crazy. So yeah, to, to a lot of influencers that are starting out there, you have to, you have to really, a lot of the influencers are going in not knowing anything. So they like get reached out and, and these people are like, Oh, I'm a manager. I can do so-and-so for you. It's all talk. And then they just end up stealing their money and taking advantage of these kids. It's terrible. I mean, you know what, man? And it's not that easy to find someone that you want to work with. And that like, you know, like, you know how we, you know, yeah, Kai goes my partner and I'm his guy. Like it's not easy to find that partnership, man. You know, obviously Mike goes with you. Like, and that's really where success comes. Then you got to find somebody who you trust and love and like, People will go in there and promise you world. And it's like, Kygo didn't sign up with me. I never promised him one thing. I still don't promise him anything. When a song's coming out, I never tell him, we're going to have this many plays. We're going to do this. I mean, you know, we just did a We just did a music video uh, uh, for one of our songs. We remixed a Donna Summer Hot Stuff song. And we got the cast of Outer Banks, who are, you know, my good friends, Chase and Maddie. I put them in the sh you know, I put them in the video. You think I told Kygo, hey man, we're gonna have the number one video on YouTube the next day? No, what I did is I worked my ass off, I put the video together and I put it out there. People who make promises are, 
it, it's it's hopeless. It's not about making promises, and and that's where you know when you talk about Hollywood, when you talk about agents. What does an agent tell you when you sit down in a room with them? They promise. They tell you the world. They tell you. And by the way, even if you're hot and you're not, they tell you they're going to give you all to you. And like that, they're just trying to sell you. They're trying to sell you, man. And and you know what? I got Kygo by not selling. I got him because he saw the confidence. He saw like you guys have a real friendship. Yeah. And a business like you guys are building something. That's. Like you said, that's like how me and Michael are right now. Yeah, and also by the way, I really hope, man, more people go and do this because I'm not saying it's easy because it's not easy, but there is a formula to it. We've seen other people do it. We, we've seen a lot. And, you know, I hope that other people are going to start figuring that out, that there's a formula and that you've got to find the I think the point is you got to find someone you love and that you trust and, and work with it. And, 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 you know, and that's the hard part though. It is not, it's not easy to find. Not everybody. That's why a lot of artists and a lot of influencers, a lot of people don't become as successful as they should because they don't find the right guy. I mean, there's artists that are successful that bounce manager to manager. It's like, you know, look, of course the artist makes the music, right? Like there's no, I'm not taking away their talent. You know, I'm not taking away from it, but there needs to be a guy or, or, or some person on the other side who can take these people to the promised land. There needs to be a Captain Ahab, you know? It's got to be a captain. So I think everybody needs a captain. And, and look, it might be Bryce's ship, but someone's got to drive that ship. That's how it works. That's the name of the game, and that's what that's what smart people do. That's my formula. So um, kind of explain how Kygo scaled his business. I know you gave, like, a little rundown, but, like, maybe in – Yeah, yeah, yeah. So – you know, we scaled our business in a really interesting way. So, what, you know, as I told you about the first show, did well. We, you know, we sold tickets in Paris. And, you know, after we started, you know, the songs got popular, everybody started hitting me up, being like, hey, we want you to play at this club, that club. All of these clubs, like One Oak, every club you could think of in the world is basically, like, you know, we want you. I go, absolutely not. I tell all my agents, I tell everyone, I go, there's no fucking way we're going through a couple of like, miles. What do you mean? He's a DJ. He's a dance DJ. What are you talking about? I go, no, we're not going. And I say, we're going to sell tickets. We're going to go out there. We're going to sell tickets. Like you're crazy. What do you mean you're going to sell tickets? What dance DJ is selling tickets? So I basically, our first tour we ever did was hard tickets. We went into rooms anywhere from 500 tickets to 1500, you know, six years ago. And God, you know, guy goes like, you know, he doesn't really question me. He's like, I trust you. You're my guy. Let's do it. So we go and we sell all these tickets. We're like, okay, that was successful. That worked. Book another tour, 3,000 tickets. Everyone's like, wow, this Kygo guy is the real deal. Book another tour, 6,000. Then all of a sudden, I get so crazy that I decide for Kygo to play at Barclays in New York. Everyone's like, Miles, what do you mean? He's going to sell 15,000 tickets in New York? He just sold 3,000, 2,500 tickets in a couple of venues in New York. Kygo doesn't even have a top 50 song. You're out of your mind. I'm like, all right, I don't care. We're doing it. So once again, by the way, tell my agent. The agents are telling me no. They're out of their mind. So we book the show. We sell the show out. Everybody, all the radio programmers come. They're like, Miles, we don't get this. How is this happening right now? And, you know, basically the formula of how we end up scaling our business was, was selling tickets. Because when you sell tickets, you have true fans. And what I mean by true fans is you have fans that are buying merch, that are buying products, that are, you know, of course, buying tickets. And those fans will go everywhere in the world with you. They will buy your stuff. They will love you. They will, if you have a podcast, whatever you have, they will support you and they will jump on it. And, you know, and also when you sell tickets, by the way, a festival is going to actually create you as a headliner. Like, how can a festival judge you, ju I mean, justify you being on the top line if you don't sell any tickets? Because a festival is, remember, a festival is going to sell 30, 50,000, 100,000 tickets. So that was the big part of scaling our business was, was always selling tickets. And by the way, we ended up going to the Hollywood Bowl and selling out two nights that, you know, sold over 36,000 tickets in LA. So, you know, my whole business has always been to sell tickets. If you don't sell tickets, you're not worth anything. And, and that's how we were able to get crazy fees for shows. That's how we were able to also like, you know, imagine you show up to a show and you're like, yeah, Kygo, this guy is cool. And you see 18,000 people, you know, you're like, yo, this guy's the real dude. And also, by the way, all of our shows, you know, at Coachella, when we played, we brought out Ariana Grande, we brought out Rita Ora. You know, I've always been outside the box thinking. I brought out my friend KJ Apple, who was a star in Riverdale at Coachella four years ago. I've always thought, how do we get attention? How do we make sure that every time we play a show, everybody knows we played that show, you know? And, and you know, I think that's that was the mindset. That's really what took us to the next level throughout all those years was selling tickets, making the memories, 
bringing great guests on. And, and I feel like we changed the game doing that, especially in the dance world, because you'd be surprised that a lot of DJs, when you guys think of a DJ, you think of just a club. You know, you think of just, hey, I'm going there. And also, by the way, when we sold all these tickets, our Vegas deal, that's what made our Vegas deal so amazing, was we were able to show them that we could really bring in bottle customers. So, so I'm, I'm viewed as like a, a douchebag to the internet. Yeah. I'm actually using this podcast to kind of show. By the way, I think I have two in the music industry. I don't know how many people like me either. So I, 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 I want to say. <laughs> well, okay. So we have something to relate to, but I'm viewed as a douchebag. I'm using this podcast to kind of show people that there is more to me than the, the sh- shenanigans that I do on social media. Um, what else can I do to show? Sorry. There was something matter. What else is there? What else could I do to show the world that I'm unique? I'm not just a douchebag. Well, I think you crushed it, man. When I saw the, the stuff, how you wanted to invest and that you showed that there was like, you're actually thinking differently than kind of all those people out there. I bet that you got to do more things that separate yourself from other people. You know, you got to stand out. And I think as long as you continue pushing that needle, man, you got it. You got to keep threading the needle. Don't, and I, I think you're doing it. I mean, I think the podcast is a great start talking about, you know, I, I saw you Mark Cuban on like just talking about how, you know, we can become that, you know, like giving people hope that they can become so much more than they just are is that's what I think. That is the goal of this podcast. That liter- that it, what you just said. Exactly. Anyone can do this. Yeah. And I think that that as long as you put your mind. Yeah. Like, you know, listen, man, I've seen your, you know, your social media. I've seen what you're up to like amazing crafts and success, but like, I've never talked to you. This is our first time talking. I think you're the man. I don't think you're, I think you mean well. I think you want to actually help other people, which is awesome. And I feel the same way. I mean, I want to help other people too. As much as I love making money and doing things, I, I, I love helping and I love giving advice. I mean, that's why I'm on right now. And, you know, I think as long as you continue to do that and also just do different things, you know? Yeah. My, me, my mentality isn't to be the biggest creator. It's to be different yeah. and, and what, are, what, are, um, what other things are you up to? Like what other, like, I know you got the podcast. Well, right? What other things are you trying? I have the energy to drink. I have my podcast. I'm developing party animal university into a legitimate, like college site. Uh, that's where all my podcast is going to be uh, linked. I'm doing a lot of things behind the scenes. I don't really like publicize everything. Yeah. I'm until it's that. like, yeah. yeah. Miles, one of the things that Bryce has, right, is he's obviously got the audience and then he's got all these different products that he can build, right? So he's got the energy drink, he's got the merchandise, he's got the podcast, all the stuff. Venture fund, yeah. Yeah. And I think part of what he's trying to figure out, right, it sounds like you guys have done a great job of is uh, when you've got attention on you, there's opportunity everywhere, right? Everyone thinks that they've got the next great thing that you can be a part of and and you can help them be successful. So maybe talk through a little bit of just how did you guys prioritize like, Hey, let's focus on these two things. And then we're going to say no to the other 20 things that are there. Follow other people. I swear to God, it's the most simplest thing ever. Find people that you love who are amazing. Like, like I, like I thought Scooter Braun was unbelievable, right? I thought even guy O'Siri, who I became good friends with these guys. I literally watched them day in, day out. I like the deals that they were in. I like the things they were looking at. It's a very small community, man. It's just like your world, it's music. The investing world, there's, there's the same deals that are going to everybody's table. And there's certain people that are touching them. I think you gotta look at the venture funds that are investing in them. You gotta look at the people that are investing in it and you should follow. Like there's no need to recreate the whole world and try to like, you know, do so, you know, like when you did your energy drink, you picked somebody you trusted who had, who had a track record who was good. You need to follow people. And like, it's the same thing with managing. Now, when I got into music, I was, you know, there was a manager I loved who managed Avicii. I thought he was a genius. So you know what I did? So don't, I didn't, so don't recreate the wheel, you ride it. Ride it, man. Get in there. And you know what? Once you start riding it, you come up with a new idea and you want to go outside the box and you, and you made a killing, great. Go and do it. But pop on in there, man. Don't miss, you know what my rabbi used to tell me? Don't miss the bus, Miles. Don't miss the bus. Seriously, get in the bus. Don't miss it, you know? And that's that's what we've done, man. And we've been so successful doing it, whether it was music or investing or anything. I mean, like, you know, I was saying with Avicii, I, I saw all of his shows. I was like, yo, these shows are amazing. Did I go and try to rebuild a whole new one? No, I took that wall. I loved it. I was inspired by it. I did it. I took the lasers. I love the fucking lasers. I put the lasers up there, you know? And, and I've done the same thing in the investing world. I, I, I like certain people who invest. I follow their deals. I like what they do. And is, if there's a couple deals that maybe they're not into, you know, maybe I'll take the risk, but I follow certain people. But, you know, there's a company on Shark Tank that everyone loves that's going to blow up and I get that deal from. I'm like, wow, 
yeah, it sounds like a great deal. Everybody loved it. Let's do it. You know, I like to, it's not a sure thing, but I like to follow. Yeah, I think that that's great advice, especially when you're just getting into it. There's no reason to, to go and create something and take such a big risk. You know, you want to you want to work with somebody who you can trust, who's got a track record. And, you know, look, you're playing with money, you know, you, you want to do it the right way. And then I think later on, you know, you can get off the track and do whatever you want to do. But you, I think that's a great way to start is to follow, you know, and hop on. So, so do you think artists and creators, most of them, fail because they try to be different? Or uh, instead of like innovating what yeah, is already there? I, I love that. I think they got to innovate. You know, it's not like, look, I want artists to go do their own thing. I think it's separate. I think more in the investing world, when you want to start, I think it's great to hop on with other people who are successful and who bring you great deals. I think it's a great idea to jump in with them. I think on the artist side, yeah, you want to be creative. You got to be innovative. You got to be pushing needle. If you start creating songs that sound like every song that's out there, like good luck. But obviously, you told me you put a song out, and I'm sure that song. I don't know how different that song is to everybody. The, Bro, so, the song is different it, because it's. But you got it. yeah, the song, the song is different because it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but you're hopping on it, and that's the edge, man. That's what I was talking about. That and that's what's innovative. Is like, is anyone thinking that you're gonna put a song out there? No. And that's what, and that's, what's innovative. And you know, a lot of people like, is Vin Diesel putting a song out? Like that's innovative. It's not copying. It's different. And you know, there's a lot of people to go to and create a project and create an idea. You know, I, I think being innovative is, is what's in and, and you can be innovative by working with other people. You don't have to be innovative by literally trying to create, like, it's like building a whole house on your own. Like, why would you do that? You're obviously going to want to go get an architect. You're going to want to go get somebody to help you design the house. If, you know, it takes a team to win, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with working with other teams and, and, and building the best house you can. Okay. I'm going to be innovative right now. I'm putting you kind of on the spot. Why don't we do a joint uh, venture label and call party animal university? I mean, party animal records. Why the fuck did I say that? I mean, that's my shit. Party animal I love records. it. Let's do it. I'm in. Let's go. Oh, wow. I wasn't expecting that quick of an answer. I'm, in, I'm, in. Dude, I, I'm ready. I, this, is what I live, this is what I live for. This is how I go to sleep at night. It's like, I, there's new things. I need new things to keep going and be excited about. And you're a cool guy. I don't know. I had a, I had a, I like, <laughs> I'm into it. I get your vibe. I like, oh, I never went to university. So I, I like that. Let's do it. Party university. I can finally go to school and we can create a label. Done. <laughs> Done. Yeah, that would, uh, we could talk about what that. Kind of, what are we, what kind of, is, are you the only artist or who else are we going to, who are we going to get? Oh, we're gonna we can we can get all the TikTokers that want to make music. You know how many numbers who, that would. Who do we pick? Who's our first signing? Who are you signing first? D uh, Jaden. No, actually, he's already with a little. Uh, <laughs> Dixie D'Amelio. I like. I'm into it. That works. I like that. Uh, any any Sway House members that want to hop on hop on music? We we can't get someone from the other house, right? It's got to be in one house. Huh? It's got to all stay in one house. We can't jump up. No, no, right? no, no, no. We can, we can, we can branch out. Well, I, mean, I can, I can get, I can get a lot of yo, people. When I come to LA, you can take me for a tour. We'll have everyone audition. That's what we'll do. Oh, heck we'll yeah. We'll get everyone together. We'll do an audition, man. That's what we do. We're gonna, American Idol. We're just sitting. We're like sitting on the, bro, Idol like University, behind the desk, man. judging people. Idol University, bro. We sit down and we idol, you know? <laughs> it's all about money. Miles, thank you so much for coming on, man. This is fantastic. If you had to leave Bryce with kind of one piece of advice as he navigates all of this moving forward, what uh, what's the one piece of advice you think that he should uh, just kind of sear in his brain? Have fun. That's it. Have fun. Do do things that you love and just keep innovating. Like like what you're doing is great. Just have fun with it. Don't overthink it. If you like something, be involved and do it. Do not overthink it and have fun. That, that, that's all you can do. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to talk. I'm excited to talk more. Yeah, bro. I'll see you. I think we got dinner Saturday. So I'll see, I'll see you at dinner on Heck Saturday, yeah. all right? I'll see you on All right, Saturday. guys. Peace. Peace. Thank you guys so much for listening all the way to the end or watching all the way to the end. If you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Let's hit fucking number one. And if you guys are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like. We'll see you guys fucking next time. Peace.